Hello fly fishers and fly tars. My name is Captain Rich Santos. I run First Coast Fly Fishing Unlimited. Today I would like to demonstrate and tie for you my mutant gurgler fly. This is my hot pink and chartreuse version. And this is the white and red version. These are very effective top water flies that catch fish. Thanks for joining me. Now I call this the mutant gurgler fly because of the short length of foam that's tied on top of the shank. The foam only covers about a half to two thirds of the hook shank, um, which allows a portion of that shank, about a third of it, and the bend of the hook and the whole gap to really hang in the water column a lot lower than your standard gurgler pattern. Your standard gurgler pattern has the foam going all the way across the shank, letting the fly ride flat and level with the top of the water surface where this will hang into the water column lower to help increase your hookup ratio of fish grabbing it and taking it. So that's the idea behind um, the mutant gurgle fly. Okay, it's a long shank hook with a wide gap. Red thread. I always start the thread about a quarter inch behind the eye of the hook and I'll bring this thread back about two thirds of the way back down the shank. Stop it about there, trim it off. Now I like to put a uh, loop guard or foul guard so that the bucktail does not wrap around the shank of the hook. I'm using uh, Mason 16 pound hard Mason, as you can see there. Instead of leaving it as a uh, just a regular rounded loop guard, I like to um, make it a triangle shape by just flattening the corners here like this. basically just crossing the line at two corners like so. I'm kinking it and what I'm doing here is making a triangular shape by creasing the line and bending it and I lay this up here on the shank to do this one at a time, get that out of the way, straighten it out, okay, even it up, do the other side, kind of pull it out, straighten it out with my fingernails, that's kind of what we're looking for to do right there. As you can see what's happening there. Trim off the excess. Like I say, this is a 16 pound hard type nylon mason brand. Put a little bit of um, glue on that okay now I'm gonna build my tail piece of chartreuse the bottom of the tail I want this fly to be about three and a half inches long flash I like to stagger the flash a little bit leave it a little longer than the bucktail itself
Come in with some hot pink bucktail over the top. Trim this up. A little bit of glue. I like a piece of hot pink deer hair to flare up at the back. I feel that this gives it a little bit more buoyancy in the water. Trim that up. And there's your tail. So we've got a chartreuse belly on the tail, flash in the middle, hot pink bucktail with hot pink um, deer hair over the top. Next, we'll go ahead and bring the thread forward to where we first started. We're going to tie in the foam. This is Rainy's sheet foam. We're going to start the foam right where the threads begin and wrap over and onto the shank and kind of compress it as we go along right to the knot of where the tail begins, just like so. See? Here's your tail. I'm going to go over the foam a few times over the shank and kind of compress that down a little bit. And we're going to put in our crystal chenille. I like using this Dodd UV Polar chenille available at the Blackfly Outfitter. It's got real long fibers on it that I like because of the way they splay out on the sides of the fly. I'm going to just tie it in at the back here where the tail begins and where the foam comes out come forward with our thread just tying an overhand knot real quick and we're going to palmer that flash chenille around the shank of the hook again that's the dyed UV polo chenille hot pink we're going to just palmer that in kind of cover the belly as much as we can back here like so, and palmer it. Right to where the threads begin, just like so. That should be good right there. Tie it off. Cross it over, tie it off. kind of pull some of these crystal fibers back so we don't overlap it too much. Flatten them out and lay the foam over. Pull it down, lay the foam right over the top of that shank. And you're going to wrap that foam three, four, five, six times. Make sure it's straight. Kind of make sure these, that this crystal um, fibers are 
will flatten out just like so. This kind of makes a nice wake in the water when you strip it. It makes a nice rippling effect in that water with these long fibers here, which I like a lot. I'll pull the foam back and tie off in front of it. Make sure everything is nice and pulled back. And make a head. Trim it up a little bit, clean it up, make sure it's nice and straight. Now I like to add a little red throat to it. like so. Not necessary, but it adds a little character to the fly. Hold everything back. the excess. Get a nice little red throat there. And just finish the head off and this is pretty much almost done. Okay. Do a whip finish on it with the whip finishing tool. Second shot. I'm going to trim that off. And this fly is pretty much done. I have to trim it off here. It's best to take it out of the vise. Trim it off. Right there should be good. There you go. Kind of push that back. I like to put glue right on the head sometimes and push this back as it dries. And there is your mutant gurglefly. There you go.